When it comes to Mega Man animes and cartoons, the usual culprits that get brought up are the weird Cartoon Network show that just came out, Mega Man NT Warrior, and that other weird cartoon with the bad voice acting. And those are all fine, sure. And also, there is there is a Mega Man Star Force anime, which I've never seen, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about my favorite Mega Man anime of all time, which is a three-episode OVA based entirely on Mega Man 5, for God knows why, but it is. It's based entirely on Mega Man 5 specifically, and it is only three episodes, which sucks because it's an amazing anime, but that does make it a whole lot easier to cover in one YouTube video, so... Let's hurry up and do that. So before I start the episode for you guys, I just want to let everyone know that this is technically an educational anime about Japan's culture and history presented by the Japan Center of Intercultural Communications, which will become apparent as we watch. Surprisingly though, the educational content does not take away from the Mega Man content and it doesn't feel boring or like filler or anything, so don't worry guys, it's just educational enough to go tell your mom that these are the good kind of cartoons and not the ones with squids in them. The first episode starts off with this amazing intro where Mega Man uses Power Stones somehow to take out a bunch of enemies, which is the only unrealistic part in the entire anime. Now, maybe I'm a bit biased since I've been deprived of good Mega Man animation, but I could probably watch this intro on repeat for at least 37 minutes. Once you finish those 37 minutes of watching the intro, we're greeted by a dude playing Mega Man 5 on the Famicom with real sound effects from the game, which is a nice touch. Though I do gotta say, going for Starman last is a real real noob move by this kid because I mean Starman gives you two weapons and he's super easy so real gamers kill Starman first. Anyway eventually the dude playing Mega Man pulls an ash snap him and falls asleep while playing because it is past his bedtime and while the game sits idle Dr. Wily decides to just uh leave the game. What's this? No more energy? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can't move, then I'm going to escape. <laughs> Just so you guys know, this came out like five years before Toy Story, so shoutouts to Mega Man for leading the way for Disney of all people. We also learned that Dr. Wily does not take fall damage, which is useful intel for the future of the Mega Man franchise. Anyway, once morning comes, the dude wakes up and lets Mega Man out of the game, where everyone gets briefed on the situation thanks to the giant Dr. Wily shaped crater left behind. Also, Rush can talk, which is kind of weird. Mom and dad end up finding out about this entire situation and are surprisingly super chill about it, but we all know school is more important than saving the world, so Mega Man has to wait for them to finish school before he can track down Dr. Waiwi. Also, for some reason, despite being Japanese himself, Mega Man asks why the cars are on the wrong side of the road. Uh, I don't know on this one, guys. Don't ask. While Mega Man is waiting for school to end, Dr. Waiwi attacks and Mega Man uses his, uh, laser blaster? These robots need a taste of my laser blaster! Which is weird, but all the enemies are ripped straight from Mega Man 5, which makes the Mega Man fanboy inside of me jump for joy. And it really hurts. After an epic battle between Mega Man and Dr. Wily, where we start to learn the true power of Mega Man 5's weapons, Mega Man decides he needs to grind for those sweet, sweet M tanks in the game world, so he heads back home. But not before Dr. Wily turns into a ninja and disappears. Uh, alright. We end up getting a cameo from Eddie, which energizes Mega Man for the hunt for Dr. Wily. This is where part of the educational bit starts happening happening and the kid explains Japan's culture to Mega Man throughout their hunt. Also, for some reason Mega Man does not understand seasons despite beating Mega Man 2 canonically at this point, but whatever. We end up finding out Mega Man likes anime girls right before he has an epiphany that Dr. Wily would use what Japan fears the most against it. Oh my gosh, Dr. Wily's gonna make a nuclear bomb! We gotta stop him! In reality, Dr. Wily used an inactive volcano and, um, activated it. But while Mega Man is about to die from a heat stroke, he uses the water wave canonically as it's only on the ground, so that's an A-plus for video game accuracy. But unfortunately, the game accuracy is a little bit too real for Mega Man, as all of his Mega Man 5 weapons are completely useless against the fire. Luckily, we do find out that Beat the Bird knew something was wrong all along. <laughs> and did nothing about it, so now at the very last possible second to save Mega Man Beat and Proto Man also escape the video game world and show up to help Mega Man. Also, as a side note, somehow Beat and Eddie's voices are even more annoying than their other weird Mega Man cartoon voices, which is really just impressive if I'm being honest. Once again, the show is incredibly accurate to the video game as once Mega Man shows up to Dr. Wily's new fortress, he has to face Dark Man from Mega Man 5 and then he immediately has to refight all of the Mega Man bosses, which again, 
equals my nostalgia nutsack. Also, this really makes me want to play a Mega Man 5 version of Mega Man Nita. Anyway, as usual, Mega Man defeats Dr. Wily and manages to shove him back into the game world where he belongs. And the cartoon ends with Mega Man being unable to use chopsticks to pick up a fried egg and then game over. What? Why? We won! Well, that first episode was certainly enjoyable and uh, despite coming out before Mega Man 8, for some reason it gives me the vibes of like if the cutscenes for Mega Man 8 were actually good, if that makes sense. You know what, maybe it does. Let's just watch episode two. Of course, episode two starts off with another beautifully animated intro, but this time in space. But before we get into this episode, I want to mention that in the American release, for some reason, this episode was labeled as episode one and the other episode was labeled as episode two. I'm not sure why, since the order that I cover them in is the order they were originally intended to be in and how they were released in Japan, but I just thought you guys should know that strange tidbit of information. Once the beautiful intro is finished, we see Mega Man sitting in the Metroid Fusion loading screen elevator before the episode kicks off. While Mega Man is fighting in a giant boss battle, two kids from the last episode start fighting over the controller and kill Mega Man! But after some cartridge tilting shenanigans, Mega Man gets kicked out of his own game and into the real world once again. But somehow, the cartridge tilting managed to make Dr. Wily get teleported into Dr. Light's lab where he kills Dr. Light! He ends up finding out Dr. Light was working on a time machine, which Dr. Wily just straight up steals and decides to use for or evil. Now, first of all, I'm not sure why Dr. Wily doesn't just go and kill baby Dr. Light or something, but I also don't understand how a time machine from the video game world can teleport to outside that kid's house in the real world, but whatever, maybe I should just stop asking questions. In other news though, Dr. Light has the best voice acting he's ever had in the entire franchise, and we find out that Dr. Wily's plan with the time machine is to get the meteor that killed the dinosaurs and drop it on top of Japan during the shooting star ceremony. Man, you can really tell this is the plot of an anime. Though to be honest, I'm not sure why Dr. Wily didn't just read the Uchiha tablet and develop his Rinnegan so that he could use Chibaku Tensei whenever he wanted to without even needing a time machine because really that would accomplish the same thing with less effort, but whatever, I digress. After learning about Wily's evil plan, Dr. Light decides to build special glasses that allow Mega Man to see the holes in space-time that Wily keeps causing which should let him and Rush hop on. Plus, even more importantly, the sunglasses make Mega Man look really cool. But even Dr. Light admits he doesn't understand how it works, so Mega Man is basically on his own. The first thing Wily uses his time machine for is to creep on children, which is just gross, but what else do you expect an evil old man to do? While traveling through the fabric of space-time, Roll starts beating up Dr. Wily, and Dr. Wily throws her into the void where she crashes into Mega Man, and they both get lost in the vacuum of space. But somehow, luckily for them both, they land back in Japan right in front of that dude's house. After some more educational facts about Japanese culture, Proto Man and friends decide to finally hop outside of the game to help Mega Man out. Hey brother, I wish you'd hurry up and capture Wily and get back to the game world, otherwise I won't have anyone to battle with. Hey brother, I thought you canonically were actually the good guy in Mega Man 5. But you know what, maybe this anime is just making sure not to spoil the plot, so shoutouts to the anime. But it turns out Dr. Wily also made the Death Star in order to carry out his dastardly deeds, which historically never ends well, but maybe Wily has a new idea to innovate the inspiration behind his plan. With Dr. Wily putting Japan in peril, the children start praying that everything will be okay. I wished for you to stop Wily and save Japan, that's exactly what I wrote. No, stop, what, what are you doing? You're not supposed to say your wish out loud or else it's just not gonna come true. You fool! You've doomed Mega Man! Doomed! Anyway, Rush got a major rocket upgrade to send Mega Man to space, and we find out Dr. Wily is not only sending meteors to hit Japan, but he also puts rocket boosters on each meteor just to make sure they pack a punch, which seems a bit like overkill to me, but whatever. As Mega Man makes his way to outer space to take on Dr. Wily, Japan's local news station hires the best anchor of all time to keep the country updated on the fate of its own citizens. A countless number of meteorites are suddenly approaching Japan. At this rate, Japan will be destroyed. Uh, wait, a new report. Mega Man and his group are stopping the meteorites. There's still a chance. Good luck, Mega Man. Go, go, come on, Mega Man. Go, 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 go for it. You can save us. Go, Mega Man, go. Ah! After Mega Man makes it to outer space, we also see Beat single-handedly take down a meteor, which means his canonical stats must be through the roof. But it turns out Dr. Wily did have an innovation on the whole Death Star idea, because this time he has a giant space mech defending in order to make sure Mega Man doesn't just pull a Mr. Skywalker. This fight is also very epic to watch, and I really wish there was a fight like this in one of the mainline Mega Man games, other than the one from Mega Man X7. Of course, Mega Man ends up taking down the robot and capturing Dr. Wily, as well as going as far as to save his 
life, so Dr. Wily is very lucky this takes place before Mega Man 7. Mega Man ends up taking everyone home and saves the day once again, and the episode ends with that one gif I always see posted online. So it turns out Mega Man and Dr. Wily split a hole in the space-time continuum, creating a multiverse long before Marvel could get their mediocre hands on such a spectacular idea. But uh, surely nothing so damaging to the fabric of our universe could happen in episode 3. Right? The finale episode of the anime once again follows the pattern of having a beautifully animated intro that makes me want to play Mega Man every day for the rest of my life, but once that ends, we see Roll in some kind of power suit? What game is this from and how can I play it? Also, Proto Man wants to fight Mega Man again despite it not being Mega Man 3, but again, maybe the anime is just being considerate to not spoil the story from Mega Man 5. In this episode, Mega Man actually gets deliberately ripped out of the game by those kids for the first time instead of it being some kind of weird glitch or accident, and I really need someone to tell me how to do this in the comment section for research purposes. It turns out it's time for some kind of Japanese festival which the kids invite Mega Man and Roll to participate in and they end up having a very good time. But back in the game world we learn that Dr. Wily just be wandering around menacingly sometimes when he stumbles upon the other side of the TV screen once again. But then Proto Man shows up and tries to stop him meaning Proto Man is just a troll in the game who messes with literally everyone's plans regardless of their moral alignment. Or uh, in other words, SPOILERS! But it turns out Wily made his own dang time machine with Blackjack and it's allegedly even more powerful than Dr. Light's old one. Back at home, somehow the kid manages to visit Dr. Light's lab in Mega Man 5, which is just crazy because that wasn't a thing until at least Mega Man 9. We end up finding out Dr. Light is fixing up his old time machine, but in the meantime, Mega Man needs to search for Dr. Wily. And thank goodness he keeps sticking to Japan only. Eventually, Dr. Light finishes repairing the time machine and Mega Man decides to go into the future to see what Dr. Wily's plans are, only to find out that he's destroyed the entire world! Which means Mega Man needs to go back to the past to play the stupid games that suck anyway. There is some more educational stuff about Japan thrown in here, but again, it's really well done and not boring or distracting at all from the story, which I am genuinely impressed about. We even get to learn about the Kanto region, which is where I've heard Pikachu lives. But it turns out Dr. Wily is using the power of Typhoons to take over Japan, which gives Mega Man the idea to fight fire with fire by getting a super fan from Dr. Light to blow the Typhoon back. Huh. Mega Man is doing a great job, but despite that, Roll decides she wants to help Mega Man by crashing the time machine into the Typhoon and completely destroying it. Now this is a certified bruh moment. Roll and Mega Man do end up getting home safe and after recuperating a bit, Mega Man, Proto Man, Rush, and Beat go after the Typhoon to try the exact same plan again, but this time without Roll. And once again, Beat turns out to be extremely overpowered as he single-handedly carries Mega Man while flying through a Typhoon, which I can guarantee you no other bird would be able to do. Okay, maybe Storm Eagle, but that doesn't count. Mega Man and Beat end up crashing on a robot island Dr. Wily has been making where Mega Man has to fight all the bosses from Mega Man 5 once again at the exact same time, which I love to see. Also, once again, this really makes me want to play a Mega Man 5 version of Rockman 2 Nita. After Mega Man takes out all those clowns, Wily whips out the big guns and kills Mega Man! I can't let this happen! If I lose now, that'll be it! Japan will disappear! I won't lose! <laughs> But luckily for the sake of Japan, Proto Man comes in clutch once again and teams up with Mega Man to take on Dr. Wily. Also, I'm not sure if you guys are Ghostbusters experts like myself, but apparently these guys are not because they cross the streams. Luckily, this kills Dr. Wily though, just like it did in Ghostbusters, so maybe crossing the streams ain't so bad after all. Strangely, after defeating Dr. Wily again, Mega Man again saved his life, so Wily should really be thankful this is still before Mega Man 7 takes place. After implying that Mega Man sends Dr. Dr. Wily to prison. At the end of all this, we see the children saying that Japanese people love Santa Claus as Mega Man and Dr. Wily give presents to everyone while dressed as Santa Claus. And uh, with the whole time machine thing, I think it's safe to say that Dr. Wily is actually Santa Claus confirmed, but uh, overall, this was just a great ending to an amazing anime. Well, we went into this expecting an educational OVA about Mega Man 5, and we left realizing that Mega Man has caused irreversible damage to our universe and the space-time continuum. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see me talk about more Mega Man or anime stuff, let me know down in the comments and I promise you guys I will learn how to read soon. I promise. For real this time. You better like your